Yo, what up? It's Jake One, and you're listening to Day One Radio. The business. The business. Welcome back to another episode of Day One Radio right here on ablradio.com. I'm Maurice Garland here with Brandon Peters, a.k.a. Brandon LSK. For sure, for sure. And man, tell them where they can find the entire Day One Radio catalog. You can always find us on dayoneradio.com, first and foremost, iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, SoundCloud, everywhere else you can find podcasts. It's even on some stuff I ain't never heard of when I look at the analytics. So we appreciate y'all <laughs> spreading the word. But most importantly, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. Make sure that you do a review and give us five stars. You know, we might shout you out on the show if we see that. So what's going on, bro? Everything's cool with me, man. How about yourself? Everything is good, man. Just ramping up this this second half of 2017. We got to give a shout out to our podcast brothers, The Nappy Hour. Okay. Uh, the Nappy Roots has a hey, they have a podcast based here in Atlanta as well, and we did that podcast last week, so you guys should see that up, the Nappy Hour, and they just put it on iTunes. So it was an interesting conversation, man. We gotta spread love and support each other, man. The only competition is within yourself. So, yo, we went to you didn't go. I thought I was gonna see you there. Yeah, man. There was a, these, these last two evenings have taken some uh some some turns for me so i couldn't really get out but i okay. know i probably missed a hell of a show though well yeah man we, we, one day there was a show here in atlanta first show from this group that i'm sure you guys have heard of because we have very eclectic music mm-hmm. listeners <laughs> amongst our fans a tuxedo man mayor hartthorne and jake one so man me and jake i first met jake so many years ago i can't i think i met him either through 40 or dow jones so I was like, yo, we got to have his brother on the show, man. He in town. We've never got a chance to interview him before. So without further ado, Jake One, what's hey. happening? Glad yeah. to be here, man. For so, sure, most definitely. been enjoying the Atlanta experience. So sure. that was your first <laughs> show in Atlanta. What was your reaction? It was really good. It wasn't like, I mean, compared to some of the other places, it wasn't as many people, but the people were there were all the way engaged, and that's honestly what you'd rather have right. in yeah. general. So. You know, the funny thing is we have not even done a show south of, I don't know, maybe Philly or D.C. Wow. That's why I'm mad at myself for missing it because I was on the first tuxedo hard. And I was like, and I was looking at tour dates and I was like, damn, man, they ain't coming nowhere near Atlanta. Not even I mean, like Memphis or Charlotte yes. or, you know. <laughs> you know, the first go around, we definitely didn't take it seriously like that. It was like when we did, we put it out. We we're like, yeah, you know, we might do. We didn't even know if we were going to do a show with the band because it just, you know, we right. just didn't really know what the reception was going to be. And then um, we just kind of wherever went wherever the money was. So, you know, you come somewhere down here and you got to prove yourself. It's like you're going to take that L financially. But I just wanted to do it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's such an important place for music. It was only right. Definitely. You know? Man, how did, like, people that don't know, like, Mayor's, Pass like his musical pass is so super random. He is like both of us, so it's it's. It but totally his makes is even more random this. than yours. True, like, yeah, true, true. Yeah, if y'all don't know, just Google <laughs> that man. He started off as like a hip hop DJ yeah. in Ann Arbor, and then joined a group and was like working for Stone's Throw and yeah. making music. The Peanut Butter Wolf was like, "Nah, mm-hmm. we need to use this shit," and it's just been super random. So, how did you guys? linked together we met during the dj thing so we were you know i was i was already kind of doing my thing as a producer but probably it must have been like g-unit times and i was that's all i was doing yeah and in the midst of like whenever i'd be doing that i get so burnt out on that sound that i would just do something totally different that was like fun to me and i made a mixtape that was all like early 80s r&b Fog, you know, just basically records that had the Jerry Curl on the cover. Like, <laughs> just the, the the common thread. That and, should have been the name of the mixtape. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> funny. I I had, did this mixtape called AR Music, and it, I even put my homie with a curl on the cover. Yeah. Um, 
And that was like 2003. Um, I don't, it might have been House Shoes. Somebody was like, hey, there's this dude in, in Ann Arbor and he made a mixtape. It's the same songs you got on there. Oh, wow. Which was kind of weird because at that time in, you know, like the digging community, it was more like Funk 45s and, you know, right. uh, DJ Shadow and them, Brain Freeze. People weren't really on the boogie stuff at all. Mm-hmm. So we ended up meeting that way and uh, just became friends, you know, and he, um, I never forget, like, he randomly played me, just ain't going to work out, like, maybe two months before it came out. And I did not believe it was him singing. I was like, right. no, it's not you. Like, it just, he wasn't known to me. You as know, that. baby, I know you think we can make it all work out, but I got to tell it like it is. And I don't want to make this any harder than it needs to be, so don't cry. literally goes around the world off that like he literally just a guy doing his shit not having much success to like everybody wants a piece of him and uh, around that same time I, I was learning how to play keys um this dude named g coop who uh actually just co-produced bad and bougie which is pretty wow. amazing from <laughs> oakland um did he work with tony 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 at some point no no, no he's not that old because I know the name sounds super familiar, yeah. but yeah. Continue. So like he, uh, you know, I took piano lessons from him and I would always wanted to do stuff that had more keyboard oriented sound because that's the stuff I grew up on was the 40, you know, the anything on Solar Music Group, you know, West Coast, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So when I learned how to do that, I just started making tracks in the vein of like the stuff I was listening to, just, just really fucking around with it. I sent him like, I sent Mayor two beats and he just sent me two songs just like that. And this mm. was when it's before his first album even came out. Okay. So we kind of had just been doing it for fun mm. for a long time, you know, and then the records just got good at some point. It was like, yeah, we should probably put this out, but it still wasn't like, yeah, man, we're about to go on a road or, you know, I, <laughs> I would have never thought all oh, this was going to come out of this, you know? Right. I mean, and, and it's funny, like you can kind of tell that, it was made organically because there's a lot of you guys personality oh, for sure. in the song for as sure. well. Like it, and that, and that's what's really dope about it. Had you ever, before this whole thing just kind of organically happened, had you thought about being an artist before? Were you Hell cool? no. I don't, Cause you're a pretty I don't low like key it. dude. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say you pretty chill. So. I mean, I had done, I've been doing well as a producer for like 15 years. So it's kind of like, it's weird. Like, there's definitely a lot of things I don't like about it, but doing a show and having like thousands some people singing your song, there's really nothing like that. Right. So just being and even you know, I had to like learn how to play keys a little bit on stage. Never had done that before. Um, it's it's been fun, man. It's it's definitely opened my eyes, and even just to some of the things where like you know my friends are going on tour, and I'm like, yeah, you're just going out kicking it. You know, you're on tour having fun. It's like, that shit's really work. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're doing a bunch of stuff you don't necessarily want to do, and you don't get to decide when you get to do anything. So I definitely have a whole different respect for artists uh, in general after this whole experience. I'm sure. <laughs> has, has Bruno Mars called y'all to say thank you? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, the funny thing is uh, a friend of mine produced on the Bruno Mars album, and he... Uh, he called me like when they were working on it. He's like, man, Bruno's really, he's like, he's going in on that, you know, same kind of stuff you guys are doing. Not exactly the same. Right. So he was like, yeah, send some beats. So I sent some tracks and I guess he liked them a lot, but then I think he was probably like, this isn't exactly me. Yeah. I think, you know, the thing is, I, that's my, that's probably my favorite album that came out last year. Oh, the album was jamming. He, 
he can really hone in on some nice shit and do it damn near better than they can, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, and I just love how he just, he ran the gamut of it. It's like, he got the fucking guy song, you know, he got the, the I, Bobby Brown slow jam song, you know, yeah. the request line dedication kind of song. He has everything on there. It's, it's, I liken it to like, I was at, at the tuxedo show. I yeah. was telling one of my boys, I was like, dude, it was funny is this music is super jamming and our generation to younger people really like it. If I played this with my father, he would be so offended. He <laughs> would be like, man, we was doing this back then. Yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I was going to ask that because like, you know, when I took a road trip with my family around the time the first tuxedo came yeah. out, I put it on yeah. in my pocket. He wasn't offended. He was kind of like, you know, who is this? Yeah, and I was yeah. like, what's this group named Tuxedo? Uh, it it, it kind of sounds like so and so and so and so. Right, Did right. this just come out? Did I miss this? We're like, no, it, it came out this year. So it's like <laughs> that's sort of a compliment, though. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, so like, they feel like it could fit in. Yeah, yeah. So how did you like you know go about making it without you know I guess like being too blatant because you it's, know a lot of folks be like, man, they yeah, just yeah. copied and pasted this. Right. You know I mean? It's tricky because I think I think what makes it a little unique is that we come. I mean, we come from such a hip hop perspective. Mm-hmm. And like for me, you know, as a kid, I remember hearing Gap Band and stuff like that. You know, I was playing when I was a little kid, but I didn't really know the records or whatever. So a lot of that stuff I really got into through G Funk, you know, like what Nate Dog was doing or, you know, what Daz was replaying or whoever it was. So <clears throat> with Tuxedo, it was kind of pointless to try to do, we, we weren't going to be able to do it as good as them. And I think some of the first songs we did, it was definitely way too, you know, derivative. And I think at a certain point we found like, all right, Mayor's voice, just being himself is what's going to make it different. Because he's not singing like a Alexander O'Neill. Or, right. He's not a belter. He's not like that classic, powerful voice like that. Um, and I, I think the mix with the G-Funk is to me what makes it different. Um, yeah, yeah. And then I'll meet, you know, I, it's crazy. I meet some of these guys like the legends and they love it. And they're just, I'm just, I'm thinking, but you know, you're, you're uh, Lester Troutman. How are you supposed to, you know, it's like, I wouldn't think he'd be impressed with it, but they love it. They're just mm-hmm. like, I can't believe how close you got the sound. Mm-hmm. I think that more than anything, the sound is what's so derivative. I'm using all them old ass keyboards. Yeah, yeah. Cause I think I read something about, you know, you guys using the older keyboards. Y'all was working with, like, some of the same engineers, too, right? And we end up getting, yeah, John Morales, who mixed a lot of the classic boogie stuff. Like, the you know, he makes over, like, a fat rat and shit like that. Oh, like, wow. So, but, you know, he also, I think, he's one guy that kind of transitioned and made it. His stuff bangs for 2017 because we didn't want it to, like, come on and sound like exactly like an old record. We wanted to hit a little hard and compete. You know, because you're gonna play your shit next to other new records, um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a fine line, man. There's definitely songs we had that we scrapped because I was like, eh, this is just too much, like such and such, you know. Okay. Um, even my mom will be like, like when I played her second time around, she's like, there used to be a song second time around, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, mom, but you know, we didn't we didn't even the song doesn't sound like Shalimar. She was like, Shalimar second time around, oh, second time around. It's one of these things you can't you can't run from it. You know right, what I mean? It's exactly. like they gave us the wave, and you know we're just trying to put our own twist on it. You know, like I think it's funny. Like, I, and I think that's what Bruno does too, which is what's dope. He like kind of Brunoizes some shit. You know what I mean? Right. And I feel like we can kind of do the same thing. Like we we did a cover of um, Kanye "Stretch My Hands," and it's like we just did it, what Tuxedo would do with it. You know? That's hard. Yeah. That's definitely hard. Man, as somebody who has always been a hip hop purist, were you kind of like apprehensive about going down this lane at all? Um, 
I actually, it was just, it really was fun, man. I never even, I didn't think about the, you know, oh, are, are the real hip hop fans going to be mad at me? Which I'm, maybe some of them are. I don't, I feel like them days are over though. Like it was they so much like that. They probably only live in the comment section now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. If, I, I just think it's not like it was like in 2000 where it was like, this is Jiggy and this is Underground and this is tr- South or this, you know what I mean? It's not right. Like that's one thing I really appreciate about the the younger generation is they'll really be in a little B and then be in the MF Doom, which to me, in my era, you couldn't do that. <laughs> that was like tab, that was taboo. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm too old to care about that anymore. I, I might have <laughs> cared like in my you know when I, my back my backpack straps were tight, but after a while you just realize like why are we even worried about this shit it's like what's good is good and you can find good in anything very you know? true yeah that's true it's um it, it's been pretty ill man your trajectory like when you started off as a dj when you were a teenager and just kind of honing your skills even before you could have purchased you know samplers did you think that you would be able to make a career off of hell that? no <laughs> <laughs> like absolutely no i mean i, I I meet a lot of young kids that they're like, man, how did you do it? And you know, how, how do I get to this phase? And like, for me, it was, it was, there was never like, Oh, music is going to be my way. I never, it, first of all, there was nobody around me doing it that really made me money. Even the guys I looked up to at that time locally didn't really, they just weren't getting to it like that. You know, Seattle is really disconnected in that time. So, you know, the one person when I was probably like in high school that did a record that I was just like, oh, my God, somebody from Seattle did a beat. Uh, Funk Daddy did Sideways for E-40. Yeah. And that was Classic. just like mind blowing to me. Yeah. Like, oh, my God, somebody from Seattle could do something on a record that I, everybody's playing. Um, so, you know, and in those times we didn't have the Internet. So, right. It wasn't until like, you know, late nineties, I go to Gavin convention. I just give my beats to everybody. And then people were really calling me back. And I was like, damn, maybe I got something because I honestly didn't really know. I thought I was good at it, but I wasn't like, I didn't think I was that special, you know, being in like that, that insulated community, as opposed to being in LA or New York, or even at that time, the Bay Bay, was like super popping or how Atlanta is now, do you think that kind of helped you hone your skills? Because you're one of the few producers, like, people who always, I think the most common denominator is, like, those Jake One drums. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so do you think that kind of helped you hone it because you weren't really around a scene? I think I just, I mean, we had our own thing locally, and, you know, there was one other dude, Vitamin, that really pushed me. You know, he was definitely, like, way ahead of me when we started. Yeah. Um vitamin D, but I think I never had that pressure on me. That's why I still live in Seattle and like to be there because if I'm in LA, whenever I go to LA and I start hanging out with my friends, it's like some of them got way more success than me and some of them have no success. Right. But you see, you're like, damn, what am I doing wrong? Like, why do I got a Basquiat? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and I think if you're around that shit too much and you're, and you get a little too industryed out, it kind of fucks with you, man. You you start approaching the music differently. I'm sure, man. And uh, I think me being home this whole time has just let me kind of create in a bubble and just do what I want. And luckily, that's worked out because... Yeah. And I would imagine that, yeah. you know, it, it helps people, you know, I guess as far as like how they reference things. Like they know where to find you. They know what they're looking for and they know who to get it from as for opposed sure. to like if you're all over the place or somewhere that you're not really from, they're like, mm. well, you blending in with everybody. Like I can get this from anybody now. For sure. And and I feel like when I go places, it's like like I went to uh, Fuse's studio last night, 808 Mafia, and it was like they never even seen me before. You know, yeah. I've never been, i never been to a studio. I haven't been to Atlanta in like seven, eight years. Yeah. So it's more impactful, I think, when you're not around all the time. But, you know, my music's been loud because people are hearing my shit all the time. Oh, but, man, dude. Yeah, you, we're going to get into some But it's, of the been, it's been weird now because, you know, I've been the drum guy and now I'm doing shit and not even doing drums no more. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so this I, it's the coolest thing that I feel like I could even do that. I never would have thought that could happen. True, true. Man, you, you know, obviously a lot of your bigger successes have come 
um, from sample based mm-hmm. production, but you also obviously because of financial shit, you have to do live instrumentation. Yeah, you just get better. You you know you adapt. Yeah, exactly. So I I know sometimes producers don't like to talk about it, but like you have been vocal, like you've been sued a couple times because yeah. of that. Like get into that a little bit. I mean, it just when I got, I don't even remember the first time I got sued. It was always. <laughs> It was always shit that never hit, though. I'm like, mm. why are you suing me for this? This made no right. money. Um, I got well, White Van Music was the first album I put out on my own. Yeah, oh, right. and like a dummy, my thinking was, man, I'm just gonna do whatever I want on here, and if it gets big enough, I get sued. That means I won. That means I did. You know, people <laughs> care. <laughs> Probably not smart. Um, so cause I end up, I end up getting sued. Well, I mean, not necessarily sued, but I got caught. Like four or five times, all the money I would have made went down the toilet on that shit. Uh, um, and some of it was just me being arrogant, like just thinking, "Oh man, I'm gonna do exactly what I want. I'm gonna scratch this just because I want to," thinking it's still 1990 or some shit. Right. And uh, <laughs> it's not. So it honestly, that kind of stuff just made me get better. Like it made me be able to create without samples, and I'm, I'm still gonna sample. I find different ways to do it. I sample myself, like, you know, yeah. it's a challenge and it does, it does, it is a special feeling. You made some shit that's like really dope that just came out of your brain, you know? Like I was always curious, like, like what does that look like? Like when something, when you're getting sued, like, are they sending like mean ass emails? Are they sending letters? <laughs> are they taking over your computer and the FBI <laughs> sign pop up on the screensaver? Like, what does that shit look like? Um... Man, usually it's just they get at your uh, the label or whatever, and they're like, "Hey, you know, this basically you're caught red-handed kind of thing." Um, and you know, they just usually want some bread. It's never nothing, you know. I had one. I got we got sued for Three Kings, which is weird because we cleared it. Mm. But I think you know a lot of people, like always, have been doing bad deals in the music business, so. People think they might have the rights to something they don't. Uh, and for the record, Three Kings is the yeah, Jay Z, Dre, and, Jay-Z yeah, yeah. and Dre. So, yeah. um, I I got like an envelope sent to my house from the Johnny Cochran firm or something ridiculous, wow. and I was like, "But we cleared the sample. What is going on here?" And I think it was because I sampled the gospel record. They were talking crazy shit on it, mm. right? Um, but then when they went and looked into it, they didn't own the record, which sucks for them. I would have much rather see them get the money than whoever, right. whatever conglomerate owns it. Yeah, it's point. usually the lawyer or some mm-hmm. conglomerate that gets the bread. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that was going on since the beginning of time. So, um, And then like somebody tried to sue us for I Got the Keys, and I'm like, nah, we ma- I literally made that up. That had nothing to do with anything. Like, yeah. And I think when you get successful records, people just throw lawsuits at you, you know? Exactly. Which like is this some sounds... true fuck shit. Because I'm like, man, you know how many times I have actually been in the wrong? Not in the wrong this time. Right. So leave me alone. Like, right. How do um, you feel about like those videos that recreate your songs? Oh, like the uh, the uh, things on YouTube? Yeah. They uh, Like where they redo it on Fruity Loops? Or... Yeah. Or the... I just think it's hilarious. Like, I didn't put out the instrumental for Three Kings for a long time. And people were making like their own versions of it, but they didn't know what the sample was. And it's just, I, I don't know. To Some me, of it is kind of like snitching though. If the people that find the sample yeah. and put it out there. Oh, like, and that part is rough. I mean, I just had to alter how I do things. I, mean, I had to just get, you know, get a step ahead of guys. Like you're not, unless I know there's, there's definitely beats. I'm like, yeah, there's a sample in there. If it's independent or something, we probably not going to clear it because there's no money to be made like that. It's on a major. I'm I'm rarely gonna throw something out there. I, you know, don't clear a sample on because it's just that is bad for business. So I mean, I I would say I haven't been caught on anything that I couldn't that I didn't think I could be caught on in years, man, like six seven years. It's knock on wood for that. Yeah, let's word, 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 word. throwing that out there. Right? <laughs> but I I I can listen to something and be honest with myself and be like, yeah, they're coming, you know, hmm, or, right. Somebody would hear that, you know. Um, so yeah, it's it's the it, seeing people recreate my beats is to me is just like honor. Like, damn, you guys care that much to do it, you know? I think it's great. Definitely, um, you you mentioned some of the bigger songs that you've done, but you've also worked with like who I would consider like an underground juggernaut in Brother Ali, but yeah, you've yeah, also yeah. worked with like cats that most people have never heard of. Mm-hmm. 
do you have like a different approach or a different passion level depending on like the song and who you're working you with? You know, I really it's so rare I make a beat particularly for anybody. Okay. That it just I'm just doing what I do and then it just ends up where it ends up. And a lot of times, you know, like when we were working on Ali's album, he had he had the Three Kings beat. He didn't rap to it. Mm. So, you know. <laughs> like that's a lot of that going on. I think the we I did, mean, I just think like sometimes the person putting the song to it makes the beat better you know or it yeah. doesn't or it's just the right fit for them it's kind of like going shopping like i have seen plenty of fire ass you know polo shirts i was like <laughs> i don't know if it's gonna look good on me yeah. you know so i like the stripes i like the color but it ain't for me though for sure know? for right. sure it's, it's exactly like that but um tuxedo's the only thing i literally create particular things for you know gotcha. um hip-hop wise it's it's very rare that i do that you know True, true. And obviously, I guess with the G unit thing, how was that being an in house producer with that? Because I, you know, we have some mutual friends. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That thing. Well, so I've heard stories like how it did- was. I mean, I think Shaw was like amazing. You know, him being my manager definitely just got me going. You know, like yeah. I think before I had met him, I did like De La Soul, Rocco Came Flow, and a couple other <laughs> things, but I wasn't in the mix like that. I would land something every once in a while, but just being in the studio and having the access, yeah, totally different, you know, totally different experience. Um, just I also just think back, like when Curtis came out, it was like the seven hundred something thousand first weekend. It was a brick, so which like, is insane. Because <laughs> if you do seven hundred thousand now, you're headlining the Grammys. Mm-hmm. So I'm <laughs> saying so, like it was just a different time. Um, I would definitely like. I definitely got burnt out on a. On a after a while, because you would just be so stressed, man. Like, damn, am I going to make the album? Be like, oh, you're on the album. Oh, you're not on the album. You know, just be playing with your emotions because, you know, rappers don't care about that shit. <laughs> True. I mean, I also realized that early on, like, none of these guys are my friends. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, there are rappers that are my friends, but it's usually not those guys. You yeah, know, Brother Ali is my friend. Freeway's my friend. Right. You know, Wale, friend. You know, like, I don't need to be on. And I told him, I was like, dude, I don't even need to be on your album. I want you to win. Yeah. You know, some people, I'm like, fuck your album. I'm not on it. You know what (laughs) I mean? (laughs) Now, you said, you know, Tuxedo was like the only time, you know, it's pretty much the only time right now where you're like making something for that. You you brought up Freeway. And I remember buying that album, the stimulus package, which I'm mad at because I lost it moving. Like, Uh, I had like the the whole package with the dollars, all that shit. So it's like, what was that situation like? You know, like, like I'm imagining like you were making beats specifically for that Bef- one. Before you answer that, can I say that that album is tied to one of my biggest hip hop regrets? Yeah. I was in Seattle. We spoke and you were like, I'm working with Freeway. Come by the studio. Uh, and I, I think it was a lot going on. I was there for work and I didn't make it. And then I heard the album. I was like, this is what they were recording. <laughs> and my dumb ass didn't go <laughs> to witness part of hip hop history. What yeah. the hell? But continue though. Know. Um, that whole thing came about because uh, it's funny that his manager at the time um, was a friend of mine. And he he ended up actually becoming a he's a publishing and art for Warner Chapel Ryan Press is like killing right now, mm. and uh, he I was giving them beats and free just kept recording the stuff and it was when he was doing would that have been a second album the one with it's it's over and all that because I, I did so. that beat on that album but there was a bunch of other songs we did like the truth was gonna be his song for that album. Um, mm. And he was trying to get Jay and Kanye on it. That didn't work, obviously. But um, <clears throat> we just had, whenever he was starting to make that third album, I basically was doing most of it. So his manager was like, man, you guys should just gang start us. Like, mm. do the whole thing together. And that was really where it came came together. And I, I hit Rhyme Sayers up. They were really into it. We were kind of early on the whole idea of it because Definitely. I seen it. Saw the killer Mike LP. There's a lot of people, yeah, you know, a lot like of people have done people that coming shit. from different worlds, and it's yeah. like, but we were a little early, man. People were puzzled. I'm not gonna lie, like we would, <laughs> we would do shows, and sometimes the Freeway Hood crowd would come out, and they would be <laughs> puzzled, and then it would sometimes would be the backpackers, and I never will, I never forget being like, we did a run of uh, shows in Europe, like festivals, and we did. It was like this thing called Hip Hop Camp. That's like the most backpack oriented thing you could even imagine like but 10,000 people there are crazy right and 
we're doing our set and it's going good. And then, you know, we're getting to the end of the set and that's where we're going to go with the ones that, oh yeah, these flip side, we're going to kill them when that comes on. They Rock the mic, going to kill him. Didn't work out there. And I was just like, holy shit, there's a place in the world that mm. they don't know this, you know? Um, mm. And I think with Free, he was always kind of caught in between. He wasn't sure. He wanted to hit. He wanted to be popping in the hood, which I totally understand. But that lane wasn't what it was at that point, you know? So it was it was a fun project to do. We definitely had a lot of fun on the road. Um, it was dope getting to work in the studio with him and just see how he did it. Um, but it was, I kind of wish we would have kind of came back with another one. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, I kept I, going with it, but it just, yeah. cause I interviewed yeah. free sometime last year and yeah. I was like, are we ever going to get a sequel? And it's like, of course he gave me the typical rap. Well, you mean, you never know, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Will it, there be a sequel? Is, is that I don't know, your, man. Is we, that your freeway voice impersonation? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's it's tricky because it's been so many years. Like, if we were going to do it, we should have done it, like, mm. on the heels of that. You know what I mean? But I he, think there's still space work. I mean, you got Prime that did it. Run yeah. the Jewels, obviously. We I, have records. That's the thing. There's still, <laughs> still a bunch of records. He records, like, crazy I did some stuff for his new new record. Who came up with the the concept behind the stimulus artwork? package? Yeah. Um, I think Ryan Press did, man, and but wow. not not the cover art and all that. But he definitely, I think, wanted to call it that. Yeah, um, the, that was just. I feel like that was so dope, and nobody has really recreated it since. Yeah. They like you guys could do. What's the 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 company that does the re releases of hip hop stuff, and they'll just put special stuff. With oh yeah, it. yeah, like get get on down or whatever. Yeah, I yeah. feel like you guys could do one of those. Like five. We, we could have put out like that. We could put that album out and another ten songs like from yeah, because we really did that many joints. Um, but <clears throat> I don't know that. I was just, it was one of those things like when Freeway came out, he was one of my favorite rappers. Mm -hmm. So like when I would do interviews during that time, they'd be like, who do you want to work with? Beanie Siegel, Freeway, probably Jay-Z. I don't remember. So I got to do a whole record with him. That was like super exciting. Um, And then really got to know him. Like it's weird when you, you know, like I really knew his life. He knew my life. We (laughs) we were out there doing it together, um, which was really dope. I was just in Philly, but I think he was, he was like in Baltimore or something. So I missed him. Is there you've worked with so many people? Is there anyone yet that you work, that I haven't work done with that you a record for? I don't know, man. Because I, I have think you ever done anything with Nas? He recorded this stuff of mine, but it never came out. Mm, yeah. I would love to hear that. Um, they hit me up recently, so I don't know. I sent them something. We'll see. Because the album is done, as we know. Is that the DJ done? Khaled? So. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nas album done. You're right. You're right. See, that was really dope. I mean, that that record was dope. Nas still got it. I don't know. I, I think he's. I mean, we all know about Nas and his beat choices. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. not always the greatest. I mean, I when we did the Rebel Big Tune thing, the kid Seasick won, and he got to work with Nas, and Nas legitimately picked the worst beat he played. Like, <sighs> damn. And it was kind of when he played the beat, I was like, why he played our one? Uh, <laughs> Cause that's not the one I want to hear. Um, but he did make a good, he made a good song out of it. And I think maybe that's his part of his it's brilliance. His challenge. Man. Like I just want, I came out with such good. It beats wasn't like a trash beat, career. but compared to the other ones, right. it wasn't that dope, you know? Um, and that's part of his like thing, you know, some, and I don't think it's, it's clearly not like he wants to pick the beat that isn't the best. I think he just hears it the way he hears it. Dude, this man picked the same beat for the first single for two consecutive Yeah, albums. that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, you know I, I didn't really get mad at him until he let Chris Webber do, do a couple beats on his album. Then uh, That was just disrespectful to every producer out there trying to get on that shit. And they, they <laughs> say, you know, they say Chris Webber has done a lot of stuff, but that isn't necessarily under his name. But I'm like, eh, I don't Fuck know about that. <laughs> <laughs> you Ooh, know man. he was going to claim the shit out of that credit, man. Come on. <laughs> One of the joints that you did that a lot of people like don't know is your joint is the uh, the John Cena entrance music. Man, man, I played that last night at the studio just to fuck with those guys. Yo, that <laughs> shit is crazy. First and foremost, I know it's a sample, but dude, that has to be a great consistent check. That no, shit is. I don't, that's the thing. I don't make any money on it. What? Because of the sample and 
at the time, um, they were really on some like, hey, man, Vince McMahon owns everything. Wow. And you just take this check and shut up. Or don't do it. And Damn. I had a job that was probably paying 30000 a year at that point. I was going to work every day. And I think they cut me a check for like sixty grand for like six beats. So it was kind of like... You I mean, I also had no idea that it was going to be that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. But there's been times I've done records, you know, and you use a sample and you don't get anything, which it makes you not want to sample as much. That's crazy. That's... So yeah, when I hear that shit, I'll be like, uh, it, you know, it... It popped like I'm like my daughter was watching Nick Jr. and they even had the shit on there. I was like, uh, God damn! I mean, the I just see money like flying out of my hand every time I hear. So it's not like like even with that with pub, like you can't get any publishing. It's all based on you know. There's it just depends on the person that owns it and the situation and the relationship we have with the artist. Another John gospel C has, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dude. I remember the dude. Whoever uh, I sampled. It's like a Canadian record, but it was a cover of some standard. Mm-hmm. Um, they weren't going to clear it at first because the wife was less, the song that I sampled was called the. I don't remember. Anyways, Cena's song is called "The Time Is Now," and right. she was like, "Well, that's not very respectful to my husband who created this music because he's dead, and your song is called "The Time Is Now," which such a random thing to think, you know." Anyways, they must have got the money up and she got over that. I remember Cena called me. He was like, man, those Canadians are tripping. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a Canadian lady that owned the sample or something. <laughs> he might even call them Canucks. <laughs> Yo, that's nuts, man. Dude, you, I, uh, I heard a story that I want you to, to, to speak on uh, with Jeff from Pearl Jam. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my man. I hook with him, like, all the time. Where right. I used to. But yeah. you didn't know who he no, was? No, no, no. For years. <laughs> like, most, probably two years, I would go to this gym. We played almost every day, like, Monday through Friday. And it's funny because we're about the same size, so we actually would guard each other all the time. Right. And one night I was at home. I don't know. My wife was watching Saturday Night Live, and I was like, I saw a dude up there playing bass, and I was like, holy shit, that's <laughs> Jeff from Pearl Jam. I just thought he was Jeff. And there were there was clues that should have probably alerted me to it. It was like uh, he, the usual know, suspects. Yeah, <laughs> like, for whatever reason, he had every NBA team's, like, practice uniform. He would just pull up, like, oh, the whole Denver Nuggets outfit and some exclusive <laughs> Iversons. Right. You know, whatever. And I was thinking, yeah, it's kind of crazy. How does he have that? And then it all made sense. So I went to the gym like the next Monday and I was like, man, I didn't know you were a fucking pro jam. He's like, and everybody else in the gym obviously knew, but <laughs> I didn't. Um, and he was like, yeah, man, these guys been telling me, you know, they were telling me about you. And, you know, I was like, I see your name everywhere. You must be doing good. So, we, you know, I hooked, I hooked up with him randomly a couple of times. I saw him at South by one time, which was funny. Dude, that's you were like that fucking hip hop that you didn't even know who was in Pearl Jam and during I a mean, time I, in Seattle where yeah. Seattle was the rock capital of the world. Yeah, and like and it's crazy. My aunt and uncle were like really good friends with them too. I just <laughs> Dude, that's hilarious. Mm-hmm. I'm a real backpacker, man. Like that wasn't <laughs> that's really all I listened to. I was not listening to any of that, you know? So Yeah, very strange. Um good hooper too, man. Jeff, really? Jeff is, he was nice. I think he played in high school. There's, you know what I remember about him more than anything is I remember watching the Rock and Jock in the early '90s, and he torched somebody. Mm-hmm. He had like 18 in the game or something. Mm. That's you know? crazy. But, I I was like I had to shout him out for that shirt he wore at the uh, at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. What did he wear at the Rock Hall? He wore a shirt with like a gang of rock artists that should be in the uh, Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah. He's him. like, he's definitely, he's really good people. Yeah, I thought that was dope. It's crazy, like two years ago, that gym closed, like some punk ass technology company, of Google course. or something, bought it and bulldozed. Like this court was so dope. It was like on the water and shit. It was, it was super fly. So they did like a last game and he bought everybody jerseys and shit. Oh, that's so what Like custom jerseys and shit. Um, that's dope. But yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, Seattle's weird like that, though. You just wouldn't even know. Like, Dave Matthews used to be at the gym. I didn't know what the fuck Dave Matthews looked like. Right. You know, I could see that because I wouldn't know what he looked like either. So <laughs> I was like, hey, that's Dave Matthews. I was like, cool. You know? So, obviously, you being from Seattle and, and being in the hoop, I got to ask you, 
Do you think you guys will ever get another team? I, I stopped getting my hopes up a while ago. Once once Sacramento some once Sacramento's broke ass somehow figured out money to pay for an arena, I was like, Yeah, we're we're fucked. Um And what is your like do you have I know it's either like I still rock with them or I hate it. So when Katie and Russ were doing their thing Hated him. Hated him. More than <laughs> in, more than any sports thing of anything. Like Hated him. I thought I hated the Lakers, but it had no mm. No comparison to how much hate. Dog, last year when they almost beat the Warriors, I was damn near depressed over that shit. I was like, man, I, I didn't even watch the last two games. Wow. I was like, I can't watch them win. Because um, it just wouldn't be right. Yeah. So once when KD left, well, yeah, I, I think I did the jump and fist pump and all that. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. And I always told myself wherever he goes, man, I can't wait till he leaves. I'm a rude heart as shit for him. So yeah, no, no. I'm not gonna say I'm a Warriors fan, but I want to see him win. Definitely, I don't I, care what I, anybody says. I I don't think you'll have to worry about that. I think oh, that, that much shit is rap. over. <laughs> it's over. They're just too good. I yeah, mean, it's it, that it, simple. It's definitely over, and it's it's wild um, that you say that because I kind of feel the same way with the Raiders leaving in a couple years, yeah, and fuck they're them. just getting. Super good. And I'm like, I cannot root for a Las Vegas Raiders team. I and, just can't. And to me, like people that root for OKC and from Seattle, I'm like that. That is. So it's weird. like when when your ugly girlfriend left you and like got fine and married some other dudes, you go to the <laughs> wedding and cheer them on. Like, <laughs> right. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Who does that? Why are you punishing yourself? Right. Um, You're a, um, a University of Washington mm-hmm. grad. So what do you think about Fultz? I think Fultz is nice. Um, it's kind of disappointing he couldn't make them a little better this year. I mean, they definitely had That's some That's what flaws. worries me. And But, you know, watching the games, he really was doing what he was supposed to do. He's really good. I, I've, like, watched that other kid, Michael Porter Jr., play a lot this year in mm. high school, and I think he's better. Yeah. But like, he, he... He left. He's we, going we to fired Missouri. Romar, so now yeah. he's going to Missouri. But he was the best... Young player I've ever seen. Wow. That's Even in college. Lot. Like, I mean. I mean, it's a lot of ballers that came out of Seattle. fucking unstoppable. I just never see. He's 6'10". He's wet. He can handle. He can dunk on people. His jumper is like, I mean, he looks like an NBA player already. Mm. And I'm asking dudes that are like, you know, Maul or Martell or, you know, all these guys. I'm like, you never seen nothing like this, right? They're like, never. Wow. My homie who's an agent was like, he thinks he was better than LeBron was in high school. But maybe Shit. the only thing I would say about him is like, how much better can he get? You know, he's almost too polished for an 18 year old. Hmm. But yeah, yeah, I went to like 10 games this year. It was ridiculous. Everybody was calling me a booster. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, are you signing in the white van sports? You know, there's a lot of jokes. Um, but yeah, I go to a lot of high school games and, you know. It's it's weird because some of these guys are younger than me, but they're end up fans of my music. So I meet them, and it's it's a trip because in my era we didn't have anybody make it. Um, Jason Terry was the only one that made it out of our right. our age, and we didn't even think he was that good. So he got a lot better. Like I, I was as good as him when we were kids. So like that tells you <laughs> right. I wasn't scared to go against him. And there was other guys I'd be scared to play against. You know, right? So it's almost like more respectable. You'd be like, damn, he really. Busted his ass to get to that level. It wasn't natural ability. But also, he didn't make it, but he could have, and he was super dope. Was um, what's my man's name that went to the Grizzlies? Oh, Dickerson. Dick, Dickerson Michael was Dickerson. nasty. He was nasty. He was really nasty. He put up like forty five on our high school, like, and we were the, we've been the best team. Yeah. And he like was doing the cradle and the game. It was like you know yeah. at that time you just didn't see shit like that. Yeah, he was he was ridiculous. But we have somebody every year coming. It's crazy. No, like, that's like somebody a hot every bed, year man. makes the league. Yeah, it's um, a hot bed for you know, watching uh baby boy at beach two years ago and he's playing in the playoffs for the Spurs. Yeah. Crazy. I wouldn't have seen that coming. Definitely. You know, so it's it's I think it's just like music, or I'm sure like in Atlanta for producers, you see Southside, you see Metro, and they're you're like, damn, that could be me. And in Hoop it's no different. And you know, when somebody comes along, Maul's like, come play with me in the summer. And as a That's what's 15, 16-year-old, you're like, damn, I can compete with these guys? And they're in the NBA? Just makes you feel like it's more attainable. That's super dope. Because it's like, I feel like 
the 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 NBA guys like really look out for they the do. up and coming guys. For sure. I mean, IT, you know, was definitely like somebody that came under Mall and got to see what it took to be an NBA player. I mean, obviously he has freakish talent, but right. busted his ass, you know? Yeah. And there's it really is, I mean, I think it's the same thing with music, you know, it's no different. Definitely. Me and Maurice have this, we've had this conversation on the show a couple of times in regards to Chance and the whole not selling music mm-hmm. thing and how it affects producers, especially from the financial side. And you did a joint. Yeah, on I did one of his first, first ones. Yeah. So how do you, how do you feel about that being that you actually have done music for Chance? You know, it's one of these things like that record has probably got me money other ways, right? right? Mm-hmm. Because it was a big record, but um, I definitely didn't get a dollar for that shit. You know, I haven't seen a dollar. Wow. Um, but I also didn't go into it with crazy expectations. Like a homie of mine who's like, you know, A&R was like, yo, there's this kid. I want to sign him. He's like, you should give him some beats. I think he's going to be big. I sent him some beats. He put that song out like two days after. Mm. Um, and he was supposed to do a record for me, which hasn't happened. <laughs> but um, you know, I didn't go too into it like thinking, oh well, you know, I'm about to G off or whatever. And I thought he was good, you know. Did I see all this coming? Fuck no, you know. Right. So that's there, happened a couple times with me where I just I just don't see it, you know. So there are artists out there that make producers want to give them free beats, like, man, you are so dope. Yeah, I mean, it was it was like <laughs> kind of sound like it was more of the strength a fa- of your yeah, home. If, a homie, well, yeah. if my homie endorses something like that, somebody I really trust like that, I, I just do it. You know, mm. like I also never get the chance to work with somebody on the come up. I'm always on album two, right? right. <laughs> so you so are an album. I've two been album two and three <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> Drake's third album, 50s, you know, second, third, uh, J. Cole's second. Yeah. So it's like, it felt good to like be like, yeah, I was on it early, but I made no money off it. So um, I guess it goes both ways. Um, it's definitely not good for producers, like, because the thing is to me, it's like, if you're generating this much dough off the records, how is nobody eating but you? Yeah, you know it sets I mean? a dangerous precedent. It does. So I, I kind of see it in different ways now. It's like you have your South Sides metros are like future. That's them. That's their shit, right? Right. So what it, if you, they're just connected to it, right? So whatever they do, it's all together and they get money out of that. So even when they did, was it 56 Nights? Am I fucking that up? No, it's 56 or, Nights. Yeah. You know, those mixtapes, they probably did the enjoys for free. Right. But the shit got so big, it brought a windfall of money in another way. So it's kind of a gamble where, like, even somebody like Boy Wonder, like, I really love that Drake stays with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like he was there before you got popping. He helps you get popping. And he, there's always a Boy Wonder beat on one of his albums, you know? Definitely. Which is how it's supposed to be. But rappers, they don't give a fuck. They'll <laughs> shit on you in a heartbeat. Following the, the waves. <laughs> Following the waves. So, you know, I don't know if producers. So say if you invest in, you know, the new hot artist that you really believe in, you need to be getting a piece of that. If you're putting that much work into it, you know, if you give somebody just a beat, that's a little different. But, you know, like how is important is it for like producers to like because like you, producers have kind of gone the way the same way that DJs have. Like they've become like these brands where it's like, you know, at first it started with them putting the tags on the yeah, beat. Yeah. And now it's like, you know, they're like. You know, curating Instagram pages like, look at right. me and how yeah, I dress yeah. and all this. Like, yeah. like is that something that you like that you see yourself doing or have or having to do more, especially now because yeah. you know people don't buy physical albums mm-hmm. or read credits, so it's like they're not putting your name on the iTunes tags. Yeah, you got to yeah. hope that somebody shouts you out on Genius dot com. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, for me, I, I think just because I come from the old school, it's not really probably what I'm trying to do out of it, but. I love seeing these guys get super popping off their drop, man. I just think that shit's dope. Like the kid that got that Magnolia record, like I don't even know what the drop is saying, but I'm intrigued. I want to hear more of a shit because of that. Mm -hmm. What is this? I'm like, come on up here or whatever. (laughs) Yeah. That shit. It's like, that's a great drop. Young Metro don't trust you. I'm going to shoot you. Best drop ever, Mm -hmm. you know? And these guys are getting thousands of dollars to DJ, which is great. Let them get some money. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
everybody probably isn't going to have that path. But, you know, there's a lot of these guys. I mean, you, you go on their uh, page, they got like 500,000 followers and they only make beats, you know? And I think, I don't, I kind of hate brand as a thing. Like, mm. I hate when people aren't really, to me, like Jay-Z is a brand. It's like, you got to be some big shit to consider yourself a brand. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah definitely. It's, it's People I, get a little out of control with that shit. Like, everything's not a movie. <laughs> everything's not a brand. Everybody doesn't have a movement or a brand. Yeah. It's like, at the root of it, you have to have good music, right? Definitely. Um, but I, I think it's great. I mean, any any way that guys can make more money. And I, I bet you, like, Metro probably makes more money DJing than he does off his records. I'm Probably. sure of that too, because I've been to some metro parties and like some, you know how you can sometimes walk into a room and be like, "Yes, there is a big check behind this." Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like he, like he, he DJ the Atlanta, the Atlanta premiere. joint yeah. at the Georgia Aquarium. I was like, "Yeah, he, he's going to be eating for a while." Because it's also <laughs> like you just walk with that, whereas yeah. you do a record for somebody and. I mean, shit, I got so many of these. I was like, the album's been out a year and a half. And I'm like, where's my money at? Like, what <laughs> yeah. are we doing here? And that's common. You know what I mean? That's, that's just hurry up and wait is how you get paid off of records. So I think it's great. You know, it just really is. Most definitely. One of the dopest, I think, the purest, the backpackers, the beat they love from you the most is the Rock Cocaine yeah, Flow yeah. from Daylight, which is like the last song they perform at the show, which is crazy. You've done like a behind the beats on it, so I don't even want to get into like how you created yeah, it. People yeah. can look that up on YouTube, man. But like, what does that song mean to you all these years later? Because it was something, again, that 50 had to be mm-hmm. a couple other people, yeah. you know, and listen to it. And they just happen to get on it, and then Doom jumps on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just becomes it a was, classic. It was definitely like the first one I did that I was like, wow, like people really like this shit. Like, I'd done a couple things. It was like, yeah, you know, people are into it. But that was the first one where it was like I was known for doing that beat. Um, and it's weird because I never would have, I mean, I don't even know why I put that beat on the beat CD for Daylock because it doesn't <laughs> sound like a beat they would rap to. Right. Um, so I think it was, it was just perfect timing. Um, they just jumped on it faster too. Cause you know, like I remember red man had it, a bunch of people had it. Um, mm, I can only imagine. Ooh. I thought it was going to be bust. <laughs> I thought, I thought for sure I was going to give it to Buster Rhymes. So I was like, it just sounded like he'd be screaming. Yeah. You know, it's only five years left. <laughs> right. so that was, I just heard is that. And I actually knew him at the time. He was one of the first like big people that would like, like my beats mm. and call me and yell at me and shit. Um, <laughs> he would his thing would be like any beat that he would ever have that somebody else would come out he's like yo I was going to use that he's like I gave you the beat two years ago like what are right. you doing like, come on bro <laughs> um, but yeah I mean when I would see them perform and it's the last song that was definitely like pretty amazing because that was you know it was one of the groups I grew up loving so to have somehow have the last song in their set was pretty mind blowing like how often do you get to I guess cross paths with Scarface because some of my favorite work of yours has been the stuff you know oh, with face. Like, like, like for real like a lot of people may not agree with me but, the, but that dope man music beat oh, bro yeah, yeah. like that shit was hard as hell yeah he <laughs> mixtape that was one he didn't even tell me he was gonna put out it just came out I was like but then it was so good I was like fuck alright yeah um <clears throat> Scarface it's crazy cause he'll just call me randomly and you know, I'll send him beats and he might, there's been times I've sent him beats and he'll play me something with him rapping on the phone. You know, like he'll have a song, yeah. never give it to me and I'll never hear it again. Mm. And I'm like, how did, what are we doing? Like, mm-hmm. can you just give these away or something? But you know, he's that he's old school. So it's like, you treasure your songs. You don't give them to nobody. And unless you're getting a check, nobody hears shit. Mm. Um, but yeah, I've hung out with him a couple of times, man. I just I just fan out ask these guys the dumbest questions like whenever I get the chance that's what I do, um, and I didn't realize how much stuff he produced. I didn't yeah. know how good he was at playing guitar. Yeah, and I, golf, and golf. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I did. Uh, the first one I did for him was uh, High Notes. I High Notes. Yeah, that was. Yeah. 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 you know who's singing on that, right? That's Ooh. that's Corey Moe doing that voice. Really? Oh yeah. <laughs> I <didn't know> that. <laughs> Super random. I just found out that it was Lil Will singing on So Icy. Yeah. Wow. I never knew that on auto tune. Like, wow. 
So yeah, we we have a bunch of records in the stash, man. Um, I don't know what he's gonna do with them. I know his last album he did, he was gonna use a couple of them, but then I think he got scared of samples and mm-hmm. they just not ended up not running with him. But there was two particular things he played me that I just they were so good. I mean, his voice, you know, when when he he doesn't like it's not like he's in there doing five songs a night, right? He's gonna do a song every once in a while when it really strikes him mm-hmm. and it's gonna be special. Yeah, um, Face is one of them dudes that he, I don't think there is a whack Scarface verse out there. No, because he just takes it too seriously. Right. And he, even when everybody got on, like, I'm just doing verses, <laughs> he wouldn't even do that really. You right. know, guys will have money for him. He'll just be like, yeah, whatever. Like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Like, I remember once I tried to hook him up with Freddie Gibbs. I think they wound up working together, up, yeah, like, yeah. super late. But it was like when Freddie was first coming out, hey, man, you got Face number? I was like, yeah. Man, you think he'll do a verse? I was like, I man, I don't know him like that, but looking at his track record, I doubt it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I can link he, y'all He does up. stuff as he comes across it. Like, if he hears it, was, I was just at a static show, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Euro Drug was up there rapping. He yeah. just called up there and was like, just wanted to talk to him. He just loved his rapping. Mm-hmm. And I think that's how he's just he's just really genuine, man. He's a thousand percent. You know, what you see is what you get. Right. And um, he's so, I, like, Richie Rich. Uh, my man Rob from Dope Only in Oakland posted a video to Facebook and Rich sent Face a record that he wanted him to get on. He was like, it was perfect for him. And Rich, and I've never seen him this like just vulnerable and humble. So they called <laughs> Face on the phone. He was like, yeah, man. Like, he was like, you know, I felt some type of way. Never heard nothing back. And Scarface was like, hey, man, Face heard to be Face is lazy, man. Like, I get in the <laughs> studio when I get in the that, studio. Though, like- <laughs> yeah. It's like, it wasn't that I didn't like it, man. I'm just lazy, bro. <laughs> but you can't so be mad R- at that. Rich, like Richie Rich from 405? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that would have, that's, that's probably my favorite barrier rapper still. Really? Yeah, that's my cousin, man. I can, really? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, the 415 tape, that's probably my favorite Bay Area record ever. First one? 415. And- I played the fuck out of that shit. I still play it. Oh, dude, Sideshow. Groupy ass bitch, Groupy like ass it, bitch. it still oh goes, like it's, it still goes. That like, shit it's legitimately joints. changed my life, and I only <laughs> bought it because it said explicit lyrics on the front back then. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. drawn. That's before doggy style. The drawn yes. cover, like that oh shit my was god, so hard. the beats, everything about that album was perfect to me. I, and I remember when the second one came out, I was like, what happened? Yeah, because Rich went to jail. I was like, jail. where's Richie Rich at? Yeah, they signed the priority. Rich he had the jail. He had the dopest voice, though. Just his voice was amazing to me. Like, I just love the way he sounded on everything. Um, Yeah, it's crazy. I didn't know I was your cousin. Yeah, man. Our, our... I've heard some funny stories about him. Like, Casual had told me a couple of funny stories about Richie Rich just stunning on people. Like yeah. that's, I guess that's what he's really known for. <laughs> he, I mean, he's like always been like that dude <laughs> in Oakland. Like I remember, cause our my my grandfather and is his mom's uncle. Uh-huh. So like we all went to like the same church growing up, Cornerstone in East Oakland. He would have finger waves at church and shit. <laughs> like it was like. That was that's just him, but it's funny you mentioned Casual. Casual is my favorite Oakland rapper. I think Casual is the best Oakland rapper ever. Period. And he, it's funny because he's, he's so good at rapping, man. And he's so like he's high row, but he's so Oakland. Yeah, like yeah. he's one of the few rappers that were popular that I would just see just yeah, out, yeah, yeah. like just kicking it, hanging out. Or whatever, like, but yeah, Casual is dope as fuck to me. I love that Smash Rockwell album. That was my shit. You know, he it's weird, man. He just never. It was like he almost wasn't backpack enough or street enough. So it was like he just found it was a weird middle ground ahead. You know? of like you were talking about stimulus, but ahead of the, yeah. its time. Like honestly, he was kind of like what Kanye, Chance, all that shit is. Mm-hmm. He's a little more street, but yeah, yeah. before they were. Cause but like, it's like, I'm I'm from the streets, but I have a little more sense than that kind of thing. Fear yeah. itself. Like, dude, yeah. that, he came out with that shit when he was 17, bro. Like, when you listen to that album, and I'm sure you know as a producer. Come on, man, like, I played the shit out of that. <laughs> like, dude, like, there, you can just sit down and focus on 
the drum pattern or the sample. Like there's certain songs where shit never repeats. Yeah. Like it's just so it's insanely ahead of its time. I, we played 93, the whole 93 to infinity on the tour bus the other day. I, I still know every lyric. They from still the album. Same here. I don't know lyrics from any of the shit I've done. <laughs> <laughs> that album, I know all the lyrics still. And, and the lyrics are super weird. When I was listening to them, I'm like, damn, I was really into this. Like pondering this. This one that's with for Lilliputian. Yeah. It's like Laputian. <laughs> Dude, that was so dope. And they were, that was also like that that video. I was like the cause that's what we you know, being from Seattle. I did yeah. the jean jacket, some dockers, a white tee, and some white K Swiss. <laughs> that shit was so bay. Like got like they were just so true to what it was to just be a high school kid yeah. in the bay. Like that's just, just regular. That's, but you know what made them interesting is like, and it's kind of, I think you'll you see when people come out like, oh, they're from West coast, but they rap on East coast beats. So it's like when currency came out, I was like, oh, he's kind of rapping on East coast beats. We yeah. have a Southern voice. It's interesting. I feel like honestly though, like, Souls is one of those groups that will never get their props, but they literally birthed a plethora of rappers. For like, sure. Yeah, yeah, nobody sure. was doing body movements when yeah, you yeah. rapped until they did it. Nobody was doing the flows they were doing. Like they were that and the wake up show literally yeah. birthed. Like when I hear a lot of these guys, and no disrespect to them, but when I hear um, what's my man's name that everybody loves from Brooklyn, Joey Badass, I was like, dude, you sound just like He's, the shit I was listening he, to. For and sure, and I think that's, it's funny, it's like, that's like Tuxedo <laughs> for old but people. But I, I think, it, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're absolutely right. Because I'm like, it's cool, like, I don't, I don't, I, even with Chance and Joey Badass, I was like, I love the idea of it, I don't quite get into the execution, but I love the idea of it, and I love what you guys are bringing to your generation, because it's necessary. For sure. For sure. It's 100% necessary. Dude, you're always working on something. So what you can speak on, what are you working on? Uh, uh, most recently, um, I did some stuff on Nipsey's album. It's really, oh, really I, good. He, can we please get a Nipsey it's, album? I mean, it's, I, like? it's forthcoming from what I'm hearing soon, so I don't know when, but. He's posting videos in the studio every day. I was, <laughs> I was in the studio and I heard it. So he's got some shit. Um, man, I've been on tour so much. I ain't even be able to really do rap beats. I've just been making like ideas and giving them to gotcha. other producers. But I got a ton of shit coming with Southside on things that you wouldn't expect my old ass to be a part of. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that's, that's kind of, that's been like the thing I've been doing most. Okay. Um, how do you Which, like the whole co-production thing? I love it, man, because they go in the studio and do all the work. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm making ideas. I send them off, and then then the album comes out, and I get a piece. Like, it's yeah. great, you know? And to me, what's cool about it is I just get to be a part of the young hot shit and not compromise what I do. Because right. I can't I can't make 808 beats like them guys do. Like, Southside is a savant at that shit. Like, yeah. It's so, I don't know what he's even doing. It doesn't really make sense to me, like just in my old way of thinking. But he gets in there, I give him an idea, and he makes it dope. Yeah. You know, sometimes he takes stuff that isn't even dope and makes it dope. You know, um, like I was talking to a homie of mine that's like a my age, and he was he kind of broke it down perfectly. He's like those guys are like what a premiere was, you know, for the nineties. It's the same mm. kind of thing. Like they just it doesn't make sense musically all the time. But it's that shit that dudes want to rap to. It just mm -hmm. makes you want to rap. I think, I th and you're right, man, because I think there's so much music and we have a record store in our phone yeah. that you don't sit down and really listen to stuff like we used to. Like, uh -huh. there's stuff in Premiere Beats that you won't hear until the fifth, sixth time you heard it. <laughs> exactly. And people think that the stuff that Southside, Mike Will, yeah, Metro, yeah. Zayt, all these, they think it's just you know, simple club, yada, yada, yada. You take the lyrics off that yeah. shit and listen to it, and it's pretty it's, fucking it's some, incredible. It's some like, crazy shit. Yeah. And, and they all have their own little thing that they do that's kind of like a signature. It's it's just like in the 90s, everybody was using like Power Zeus drums or whatever. And yeah. you're like, damn, all right, I heard that break before. But then Pete had a different way of doing it than Premier, who had a different mm -hmm. way of doing it than Salam Ramir, whoever. And they're, you know, the, the, the guys now, they're using a lot of the same sounds, but they all, if you, if your ear is tuned right, you'll hear the difference, you know? And I think most people don't pay attention, especially like older dudes. They're more just like, ah, 808. Like, I, you know, 
It's not that simple. Like the and science behind like, it. Like 808 ain't always been a part of hip hop. It just came back. Yeah. Like all the shit that we love, the short NWA, all that shit was 808 based. And it wasn't like that though. No, it wasn't. It was simple. Yeah. It was like very simple. <laughs> it was simple. just yeah. boom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That was all that shit was. And it was, it was, you know, it was the shit to us too. But, you know, everything evolves. Um, I like the, I like the stuff I hear now is just getting weirder, which I like. Like I, I was like totally sleeping on a 21 Savage dude. And then I listened to some of his beats and I was like, these are weird as fuck. Like, yeah. That young savage, why you trapping so hard? That's a that's an underground hip hop beat to me. It is. So it like is. that that could be a hit. That's amazing to me. You mm. know, it's definitely, great. definitely, definitely. Man, who is out of like? I, I, I thought about this earlier. I meant to ask you, why is it that like we have you know out of Seattle, we've had such a huge you know movement with rock, and then you obviously had Sir Mix a lot with a lot of success. You are having success you know, to a lesser extent, like a kid sensation or somebody like that. But, and then obviously Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, (laughs) but Macklemore did. All right. Yeah, he did. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Sold a couple records. He got me, he got me a hit. So I'm happy. for Hey, no doubt. No doubt. Album number two. Yeah. Again. (laughs) (laughs) And that was another one just on, it was on me. Like they wanted to do it. And I, you know, I think I was doing brother Ali's. I'm like, Oh man, I got time for that. (laughs) (laughs) Idiot. You know what I mean? (laughs) That was your fault. Right. My own fault. Macklemore used to come to my house way before all that, you know, like, Damn. I was friends with him probably since 2007 or something. That's wild. But why is it, do you think, that like Seattle has not had a scene yet as far as hip-hop that is I think pushed out? I think just a big part of it is the perception of what Seattle is. And it's like, that's why Macklemore worked, because Seattle is a lot of white people. I mean, that's really what it is. Yeah, it is. And we're never going to have a rapper that like speaks on, you know, the hood or whatever. It's just never, it's never going to work. Whether we have every, every city has that. Right. Yeah. But never going to work because people's perception is just, they don't want to hear that from Seattle. Mm. And a, and a problem a lot of guys in Seattle have had is they're, they're just chasing whatever the hot shit is. Like there's dudes that I literally could follow the timeline and be like, all right, when I met you, you were trying to be Lloyd Banks. Wow. Then you put on the camo shorts and got you were a high rapper, you were a whiz. Then you started auto tune singing, and now you're doing the Migos flow. And it's like that's never gonna work. That's why Macklemore worked because he you. did his own fucking thing. You know, yeah, you're right because like you know, anytime somebody would introduce me to a rapper from Seattle, it was like it, it, it was always kind of like kind of stigmatized. I remember somebody told me about a cat named what's it Nacho Picasso. And I was like, I'm already oh, lost yeah, at the man. name, dog. Yeah. Like, where is he from? Seattle. I was like, weird name, Seattle. I'll, you know, I'll get you back around to this. about Nacho? He's like a star. Like, if you just hang out with him, mm-hmm. people are like, yeah. who the fuck is that guy? Yeah. Um, but, you know, he, and he makes it, he does make actually some unique music. It's just weird as fuck. Right. And I was even kind of like, just knowing him, I'm like, man, you could be like our Mac Dre or something. Like, you have that personality, like. But he just he just wasn't trying to hear me. <laughs> but uh, you know he he definitely has a thing. But how do you grow it outside of Seattle? And I think maybe if he was in L.A. doing that same thing, it he might he might be on a no jumper tour and yeah. popping. You know what I mean? Mm. Because he's he's got that shit. Or on the personal side, because yeah. even cuz from from Diggable Planets, like Ish and and Ish is an A one original dude, yeah, and that's why it's working. Yeah, he's also just a star, man. Like if you're just around that dude, you're like, he just he's just a totally unique person. Like, remember we went to South by one time with him, and everybody's like, yeah, I'm gonna go hit Sixth Street, or I'm about to go do this. It's like, yeah, I'm about to go to the park and read this book. And <laughs> <laughs> he's that kind of guy, you know. If I see him just around, he's just on his own shit, you know. And and I don't know, has any rapper from that era that had success came back and done something drastically different and had success? I don't think so. I don't think so. Hmm. So I mean, maybe, just maybe that off top just everlast or some shit. That's about it. Yeah, maybe. But Everlast, I feel like oh, he did do some hella different shit, huh, when he was singing. Whitey Ford sings yeah. the blue. <laughs> that was <Yeah>. different. <laughs> he did some different. But Diggable Planets actually had a run. Everlast had one song. So, like, this this Diggable Planet shit to that. Yeah. And now he's doing Diggable Planets again. It's dope. I mean, he's... When I had him on my album, I didn't know what to expect. Like, I didn't... It was weird because I think nobody thought him as being from Seattle at that point. Right. But he had been around again came to the studio and just 
smashed it, rapped like 30 bars or something. And he really has something. It was clearly something he wanted to say. Um, so I, I felt good to be a part of that. And I'm just, I, it's just dope to see him doing this thing and people loving it. You know, they've like tapped in this, like some indie rock shit. It's not even really a hip hop crowd. Like when, mm. they, when they, you go to their shows. That's that's dope. Because it is it's definitely left field as fuck. That's the beauty of music though. Yeah. Like you really never know, especially now that it's so accessible, you never know who rocks with your stuff. Like you don't. Like it's pe- it's people with places you've never been that listen to your shit and they know all the words or they know yeah, the melodies. For sure, for sure. Or whatever. I know that the first one had, you know, we talked about the sample thing. Will there ever be another white van music? I don't know, man. I there was definitely a point where I was trying to do it. Um, but man, these rappers, you know, I'm not, they, they're not getting no money from me. So it's like, <laughs> I would, I mean, I feel like the only way I would have to do it is just to camp out in LA for like a month or two and just get it together. But I just, I don't, I don't really want to spend the time on that, man. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, I got some songs. Though. I was thinking about putting out like some more B tapes and like kind of putting some of the songs on some of their, and I, you know, I have like MF Doom songs nobody's heard and shit like that. So wow, yeah, those that's rare, you know. That's right. super right. rare. That is super. You know, I'm sure Just Blaze has probably asked you for. <laughs> <laughs> that's his guy, hundred percent. And that's you know the thing with Doom, he's he doesn't care about none of the Hollywood aspects of this shit. He's just gonna do what he wants to do. Yeah, it's always been that way. Though. When people were like, when he was real hot, and it were like. They were ARs trying to find him. He was just like, "Nope, <laughs> <laughs> don't care." You know? I mean, that's a true artist, man. He is. He's a true artist. You know, there's just not that many. Everybody's so concerned with getting paid, yeah, or their brand, or you know, right. not offending somebody. He's the guy that when I think of, when we were talking about it, Bay Area rap. The guy that I think of with true artist, and it's again, it's gift and a curse is Irk. Yeah true artist to the nth degree. You know, the thing about the Bay stuff though, is they, there's always something new coming out of there and it's, it's definitely has a, a Bay century thing, but just the energy of the music is still my favorite. Yeah. You know, like when Sue came out and I went to his show, I was like, man, everybody is having so much fun in here. Right. So you know? I saw Sue rock a crowd. They put him on like two hours later and they were supposed to at a three C and he rocked the crowd in front of like 15 or 20 people and did it like he was like at an arena. And I was like, I respect this kid. You know, and I, and, I, and I hosted a showcase where he was on it. Like I hosted an A3C show and it's like, it was mostly like all the 2 chains guys. It was like yeah. 2 chains, gunplay, like all, these, all this <laughs> shit. Right. And Sue was on there. I was like, I wonder who put that together. But... It was probably a group. They probably just had rappers over you know, six but feet like tall. Sue came out, like, <laughs> Sue, Sue came out there and rocked. Like a lot of the crowd was looking like, I don't know what I'm looking at, but it looked like he's having fun on stage. You know what I'm saying? So it's like he and got some fans that he's night. He's dope, man. Like Sue is really. I like the fact that you have. I noticed the other. I was listening to a, a kid. Um, damn, I can't remember his name. He gave me a CD around the corner um, from Oakland, mm. and I was like. He sound. I was trying to figure out what he sounded like, and I was like, "Oh shit, the Bay has another sound like that whole I am Sue, the G Easy sound, which is a derivative of the Clyde Carson thing." Exactly. Like I was like, "So now cats are rapping like this," mm-hmm. and I can't be mad at it. Like at least you ain't biting somebody from somewhere else. So I, I'm not mad at it at all. But yo, we appreciate you coming through, man. This was. Long time overdue. Yeah, thanks for having me. Here we of go. course, of course, man. Please tell people where they they can find you on social and website and all of that. Um, I'm Jake Uno on everything, so just J A K E U N O. Um, at Tuxedo Instagram. I think I don't, we might be at Tuxedo on Twitter. I don't even remember. <laughs> we don't we don't update that much anyway. Just just follow follow my shit and get get the album, man. Tuxedo yeah, Tuxedo two. two out now. Um, what else is coming out? Yeah, I don't want to jinx nothing, man. You always say <laughs> it's I coming. can play you something after we get off air, though. Oh hell yeah, do that, <laughs> do that for sure. Well, yo, you're listening to Day One Radio on ablradio.com. We appreciate you tuning in. As always, be sure to follow us on Day One Radio on all your social media and also follow Hip Hop Trivia ATL. As we have been saying, we will be coming to a city near you very soon. See you next week with another dope show.